hello uh, welcome to the next presentation uh, this will be a brief presentation on stlt2 inhibitor trials so my name is dr sandosh abraham i'm a specialist registrar in endocrinology and diabetes at scarborough general hospital why i want to do this presentation is because i know it's a cumbersome job to compare all these trials but there is a chance that there might be a few questions could possibly come based on these trials especially the vertex CV trial which has really uh, influenced and rebuilt the ADA EASD guidelines I will go with the most important trials and I will end with Virtus CV trial that was the latest trial with the STLT2 inhibitors. The Empireg or the Empagliflozin uh, cardiovascular outcomes and uh, mortality in type 2 diabetes trial this was first published in 2015 this trial was done to examine the effects of EMPA on cardiovascular morbidity and mortality in patients with type 2 diabetes the method was uh, it was randomly assi assigned and the patients were to receive either 10 milligram or 25 milligram of EMPA or placebo once daily The primary composite outcome was death from CV causes non-fatal myocardial infarction or non-fatal stroke as analyzed in the EMPA group versus the placebo group. The secondary composite was the primary outcome plus hospitalization for unstable angina. The results were there were no significant differences between group in the rates of MI or stroke but there was significantly lower rates of death from CV causes in EMPA group also there was significant decrease in hospitalization for heart failure also called HHF in the EMPA group and overall death from any cause there was no difference in the key secondary outcome the EMPA thus proved that EMPA reduced significantly the rates of death from CV causes, the hospitalizations for heart failure and the death from any cause. These three were the main outcome. Including uh, patients with type 2 diabetes at higher risk for CV events who received EMPA as compared with the placebo had a lower rate of primary composite cardiovascular outcome and of death from any cause. The second trial was CANVAS uh, which tried to measure the effects of uh, canagliflozin in cardiovascular, renal and safety outcomes. This was published in 2017 the method used was uh, in the, uh, there were two trials and the integrated data from the two trials were used a total of 10,000 almost 10,000 participants with type 2 diabetes and high cardiovascular risk were included so they were randomly assigned to receive canagliflozin or placebo and were followed for a mean of 188.2 weeks the primary outcome was a composite of death from CV causes, non-fatal myocardial infarction or non-fatal stroke. And the results were as follows. The rate of the primary outcome was lower with canagliflozin than with the placebo. That means death from cardiovascular causes, non-fatal MI and non-fatal stroke were lower in canagliflozin when compared with the placebo 
the renal outcomes were not statistically significant but the results showed a possible benefit of canna with respect to the progression of albuminuria and composite outcome of a sustained 40% reduction in EGFR and the need for renal replacement therapy or death from renal causes. So this was a possible benefit from the results. Adverse reactions were consistent with the previously reported risk associated with CANA except for an increased risk of, risk of amputation and the amputations were primarily at the level of toe or metatarsal. So there was an increased risk of amputation with CANA. In conclusion, in two trials involving patients with uh, T2DM, the elevated risk of CV disease and, and, the and with an elevated risk of CV disease. So people who received the CANA had a lower risk of cardiovascular events than who received the placebo, but there was a greater risk of amputation, primary at the level of toe. The next trial is declared to me. So it was done to study, study about, it was uh, done to know the cardiovascular safety profile of Dapagliflozin and it was published in 2019. The method was random assignment of patients with type 2 diabetes who were at risk for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, also called ASCVD, to receive either DAPA or placebo. The primary safety outcome was a composite of MACE. So MACE is defined as, uh, the primary outcome, uh, the composite of MACE is defined as CV death, myocardial infarction, or ischemic stroke. The primary efficacy outcomes were MACE plus composite of CV death or HHF, that is hospitalization for heart failure. The secondary efficacy outcomes were a renal composite that included uh, EGFR if uh, more forty percent or more than forty percent decrease in EGFR, new end stage renal disease or death from renal or cardiovascular causes, as gliflozins could increase the could worsen the renal status and death from any cause. That was what it was assumed. In the primary safety outcome analysis, which included the maze and which included the maze, the composite of the maze, which included uh, cardiovascular death, MI, and ischemic stroke. So that primary safety outcome showed that CANA was non-inferior to placebo. And in the two primary efficacy analysis, that is the maze the maze plus um, HHF and uh, and a composite of CV death DAPA did not result in a lower rate of maze so in the pri primary efficacy analysis there was no lower rate of maze while in the primary safety outcome analysis DAPA was non inferior to the placebo However, it resulted in lower rate of cardiovascular death or hospitalization for heart failure. So it reflects a lower rate of hospitalization for heart failure. In conclusion, in patients with type 2 diabetes who had or were at risk for ASCVD, treatment with DAPA did not result in a higher or lower rate of MACE than placebo, but resulted in a lower rate of CV death or hospitalization for heart failure a finding that reflects a lower rate of hospitalization for heart failure. So it really proves that DAPA is beneficial in decreasing the hospitalization rates for heart failure as well as decreasing the rate of CV death from heart failure. The Creden study was done to find out the effects of canagliflozin on 
the renal uh, outcomes so it was published in 2019 there were it, it was a double blind randomized trial and patients with type 2 diabetes with albuminuria chronic kidney disease received canagliflozin at a dose of 100 mg daily and others received placebo so all the patients who had uh, EGFR between 30 and 90 and albuminuria more than 300 who were tra treated with uh, renin angiotensin blockade were selected the primary outcome was composite of end stage kidney disease dialysis transplantation or a sustained EGFR less than 15 or a doubling of serum creatinine or death from renal or cardiovascular causes. The relative risk for the primary outcome was 30 percent lower in the CANA group than the placebo group. The relative risk of renal specific composites of the end stage kidney disease doubling of the creatinine level or death from renal cause was lower by 34 percent and the relative risk of end stage kidney disease was lower by 32 percent. That is the relative risk of the renal specific composite was uh, lowered by 34 percent and the relative risk of end stage kidney disease was 32 percent. It also showed a lower risk of CV death, my MI or stroke and HHF also. There was no differences in rates of amputation or fracture. So this study really showed that it was renal protective as well as cardioprotective. So in conclusion, patients with type 2 diabetes and kidney disease, the risk of kidney failure and cardiovascular events was lower in the canafliflozin group than the placebo group. This is the latest study that is called the Vertis CV and it was done to look for the cardiovascular outcomes with etogliflozin. It is a multi-center double brine trial. Patients were assigned with type 2 diabetes and ASV CVD to receive either 5 mg or 50 mg of epigliflozin or placebo once daily. So there were two dose groups pooled for analysis and the primary objective was to show the non-inferiority of epigliflozin to placebo with respect to primary outcome. And the primary outcome was major adverse cardiovascular events, a composite of death from CV causes non-fatal MI or non-fatal stroke. So 8 to 4, 6 patients were there in the trial and it was followed up for a mean of 3.5 years. And a, uh, and, a may, and a maze occurred in 653 patients in the R2 group and 327 uh, that is uh, of 2745 patients in the placebo group that is it's, it was of uh, it was of the same percentage and the proportion was the same actually and in a death from CV causes was 8.1 percentage in the or uh, HHF that uh, death from CV cause or HHF was 8.1 percent the atrogliflozin while it was 9.1 percent in the placebo group so that was actually decreased the hazard ratio was uh, 0.92 for cardiovascular causes and the hazard ratio for death from renal causes RRT or doubling of the serum creatine was 0.81 and amputations were performed in 2% who received the 5 mg and 2.1% who received the 15 mg when compared with 1.6% uh, per who received the placebo. So there, were, there was a mild rise in the amputations when compared with the placebo. So the conclusion was among patients with type 2 diabetes and ASV CVD, etugliflozin was non inferior to placebo with respect to maize. 
This shows an approximate SGLT2 inhibitor selection for patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus. It has not included atoglifloxacin, but it has included the, ma the other major glifloxins such, such as EMPA, canagliflozin, and dapagliflozin. So with established atherosclerotic CV disease or the risk of atherosclerotic CV disease, we can choose EMPA, CANA or DAPA. Same is with the established HF heart failure, we can, can choose EMPA, CANA or DAPA. Or with the risk of renal disease also, you could choose the EMPA, CANA or DAPA. But if there is bone fracture, you avoid canagliflozin. And if there is lower limb amputa amputation, risk, if there is a risk of lower limb amputation, you avoid the cana. So for bone fractures and lower limb amputation, you avoid the canagliflozin. And if there is a risk of bladder cancer, you avoid DAPA, but you could use the other two. So EMPA could practically be used in all the, all the cases. Thank you.